welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we're going to be looking at a puzzle called The Trident by G.B. Pack, which, and I think I remember the pseudonym G.B. Pack, because I think they're obviously a Green Bay Packers fan, I want to say that. They may even write to us under the name Aaron Rodgers. Now, I don't know very much about American football, but I think Aaron Rodgers is a is a quarterback, a very famous quarterback in America. But this isn't the Aaron Rodgers. This is just a GB Pack or a Green Bay Packers fan, I think. But anyway, our testers are a big fan of this, this puzzle. They say it is really beautiful. It's very new as well. I think it only came into us in the last few days. Um, but two of them have already written back to me and said, you must do this on the channel. It's simply marvelous. So should be in for a treat as ever on Cracking the Cryptic. Um, a couple of things to mention. Earlier on today, I released a crossword video. Um, now this was because um, I had a puzzle recommended to me by the uh, the independent newspaper's puzzle editor, uh, Mike Hutchinson. Uh, it's a puzzle by Rodriguez, or R Rodriguez, I'm never quite sure how to say that, that, that final part of this, Rodriguez, Rodrigo. It's not Rod Rodrigo, as in Rodrigo's Casado guitar shirt concerto, is it? It must be Rodriguez, I think. Anyway, Rodriguez has, has written an absolutely brilliant cryptic crossword, which includes, among, among other clues, this little number here. Lying conservative in number 10, endlessly partying. Nine letters. Um, now this, if you're watching this from the UK, you will know exactly what this clue is referring to. There is something called Partygate over here, um, involving whether or not um, the number 10 staff and the Prime Minister um, partied endlessly during lockdown when there was meant to be a lot of social distancing. Um, and this clue rather, well, extraordinarily captures that uh, that whole thing. Now, if you're, if you're wondering what's going on with a, quick, uh, with a cryptic crossword clue, if you, a cryptic crossword clue always has a definition in it, and the definition's always, always almost always at the start or the end of the clue. Here it's just the word lying. So you need to come up with a nine letter word that means lying. And then conservative in number 10 endlessly partying is all wordplay. And no, the word 10, if we treat that endlessly, we can remove its last letter. And that leaves us with eight letters. And if these letters party, i.e. they sort of I don't know, dance around. I'm not going to do dancing around. Uh, and you put them uh, around the outside of a C, which is a valid abbreviation for the word conservative. You will find it in the dictionary if you check. You can make the word recumbent, which of course means lying. And this is just, am it's just amazing to me <laughs> that you can write a clue that seems so, I mean, it could be a sentence in a newspaper article. And yet it, is, it works perfectly as a cryptic crossword clue. Absolutely brilliant. Um, so yeah, that, that crossword is very much, well, it's definitely worth looking at if, you have, if you're a fan of the form at all. Um, now, the only other thing to mention is I did a count on how many of our patrons have now submitted a correct entry to our March monthly reward. And that number is now 1,500 of you, which is absolutely ridiculously high. Very, very well done. Um, that means we're going to beat last month's record if 200 more of you send in an answer in the next week. So let's let's go for that. That would be absolutely terrific. Um, and if you haven't tried it yet, then check it out over on Patreon. It's there right now. And it's just a few puzzles long. You have to do this month's um, reward on your computers or your mobile phones. And that's because when you complete the first puzzle, you'll see something appear, which we can't make appear if you're doing it on paper. I will say no more than that. Anyway, let's get on with the trident. Here are the rules. Uh, normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits cannot repeat within the cage. Ah, I was, I was reading that thinking that wording sounds wrong. And it, because because normally I say digits cannot repeat within a cage, but here there is only one cage. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, and it is a nine cell cage. So that's quite interesting. If we can't repeat a digit in it, there's a secret I know about this cage. Um, digits along an arrow sum to the digit in that arrow's circle. So that tells us that those three digits there. Let's make those one, two, and three. One plus two plus three is six. So we'd have to put six in the circle. That's how arrows work. 
uh, white dots separate cells containing consecutive digits. So those two digits there have to be consecutive. So if that's a five, this would have to be a four or a six. That's how white dots work. Not all possible dots are given. So that's telling us that it's absolutely possible, for example, for these two, dig uh, these two digits to be consecutive. Um, just because there's no white dot doesn't mean they can't be consecutive. We just know there's positive information about those three dominoes there, all of which have to contain consecutive digits. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. And now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And firstly, I'm going to deal with this cage here. Now, because this is a nine cell cage and we can't repeat a digit in it, this cage obviously therefore has the digits one to nine once each. Now, if you add up those digits, you will get 45, but I don't think that the sort of mathematics of this cage are going to be what's important. It must be something to do with, for example, Oh, yeah, well, hmm. I mean, self-evidently, these four digits here, we have to ask where they go in row five, and those digits will have to go into those four cells because they can't, because we can't repeat in a digit, digits in a cage, this digit here cannot go in any of those five cells, so it'll have to go in one of those four cells. Um... Okay, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I quite understand the trident yet. I understand why it's called the trident. It's a very sort of short, stubby trident, but it is indeed, it has got three prongs. Um, but I can see some stuff I can do with the arrows, so maybe we'll start there. Um, now, we have a small syzygy going on, don't we? These stars, these planets here, are aligning in the sense they're in the same column of the Sudoku. But perhaps more importantly, these arrows are aligning. And there are five cells along arrows in column three. And therefore, if we think about these five cells, each of these cells must contain a different digit because they're in the same column of the Sudoku. Therefore, the minimum I could make these cells would be one, two, three, four, and five in some order. Now, one plus two plus three plus four plus five adds up to 15. So if these two planets have to add up to 15 at least, we can't make any either of these as low as a five, because if we did, the other one would have to be a 10 or more. And that means each of these circles must be at least a six. And that means, I don't know what that means, but I've just noticed I've got exactly the same thing going on in column seven, look. Which is deeply suspicious. Okay, um, again, these cells must add up to at least 15. So these circles must add up to at least 15. So they have to be at least six each individually. But I'm actually wondering about I'm wondering about high digits now in these two columns because I can't, well, yeah, eights and nines in these two columns are restricted, but they're restricted in a strange way because of the trident. So what I'm thinking is, Oh dear, that's not a good colour. I can't actually see the... Yeah, I can see the arrows there. So, the can given that we know that these digits uh, have to add up to these circle digits, and these circles are in the same column of the Sudoku, what digits can we not include in the blues here, or the blues here? Because again, these are in the same column of the Sudoku. Well, you can't put eight or nine are on the arrows. And that's because if you do put an eight or a nine, let's make this an eight, the minimum those four digits would be would be one plus two plus three plus four, which is t which add up to 10. So these blue cells would add up to 18 at least. And you can't make those two circles add up to 18 because you can't put double nine into them. So that means in this column, the eight and the nine have to be in those 
well, in both of those columns, the 8s and the 9s have to be in those cells. But what I'm wondering is, can we do something with the fact that the trident... So if, if there was a 9 in here... Oh, no, it is 9s. It's 9s. Right, it's 9s. It might be 8s as well, but it's definitely 9s. Look. Yeah, this is beautiful. This is absolutely beautiful. Right, column 5, which I've neglected because I didn't realise it was important, but I've just realised when you study the trident and you think about these digits, the point, the point about 9s is absolutely crucial for this column. 4, where... Where do the nines go in column five? And what they don't do is they don't go on arrows, because if you put a nine on an arrow, we're going to have to put a ten or higher in the circles. So in this column, the nines are in those cells. Now, the problem here is that we have the most weird, weird swordfishy, thin swordfishy pattern. And that's because... This is just gorgeous. Right, where, now we've got to ask some questions to understand the implications of this, which I think are going, yeah, this, the implications are going to lead to a 7-8 pair in these two circles, believe it or not. See if you can work out why. Agadmato style, that's your challenge. Uh, for those of you who have done it, congratulations. Um, but the, the reason this is this is so beautiful is we should ask how many nines we're expecting to find in the finished puzzle in column three. Let's assume we knew the answer to this puzzle. If we look down this column, how many nines would we find in it? One. How many nines would we find in column five? One. How many nines would we find in column seven? One. So these three columns definitely have exactly three nines in them. But now let's think about how many different nines I could poss possibly put in these three columns because I could obviously in this column if we study this column first I could put a nine either here here or in the trident now in this column I could put a nine here here or in the trident and in this column I can put here here or in the trident again but because I can't repeat a digit in the in the trident I can only put one nine in the trident wherever it goes um, and that means that the maximum number of nines I can put into the orange cells in this puzzle is three I can put one in row one I can put one in row nine and I can put one in the trident. So the three nines in columns three, five, and seven are exactly in the orange cells somewhere. And because I can only put one in the trident, there must be a nine in row one in one of these orange cells, and there must be a nine in row nine in one of those orange cells in order to fit three nines in. And that means neither of those cells could be a nine. And you know, if, you, if you're not convinced by that, let's just try and make one of them a nine and see what happens. Well now, where should we decide to put the nine in this column? We could put it here or in the trident. Let's put it in the trident. We've only got two choices. Now where are we gonna put the nine in this column? Well, we can't put it here. We can't put it in the trident because there's already a nine in the trident, so we'll have to put it here. And this looks like it might work until we get to column seven, where we can't put one here, we can't put one in the trident, and we can't put one in row, row nine. So we have broken the puzzle. So nines cannot go in those cells. Now, once nines can't go in those cells, and we need, we know that the blue cells add up to at least 15, we now don't have the option of putting six into the circles because six plus eight is only 14. There is a knowledge bomb for you. So that is a seven, eight pair adding up to 15, which means the blue cells are one, two, three, four, and five. That is startlingly brilliant from GB Pack. Very, very clever. Um, now, what does that mean though? So that means these digits 
are high. They are six, sevens, eights, and nines. This is on a white dot, although that seems to give this an awful lot of options. I am not prepared to pencil mark a cell which has six different digits as its options. Sorry, Mark, I'm not. Um, so these are two high digits that and whatever these two digits are can't repeat in the trident anywhere. Uh, sorry about this. I'm not actually seeing what this means. Um, oh, bobbins. <laughs> oh, this is such a beautiful beginning and now I can't understand it. Um, hang on a minute. Let me think about this. So... No. Um, is it? It's not where eights go now, is it? So we've. I don't think it is where eights go because. Because eights haven't got the same restriction on them in column five that nines had. So the, the power that we were able to extract from the puzzle on nines was because the nines were restricted in column five as well. And that allowed us to sort of bring the trident into play. But in column five, if we think about where eights can go in column five, the problem is that we absolutely can put eights on the arrows. That would just require us to put nines in the circles. Ah, no, no, okay. Okay, right. No. It, this is the right question to ask. You just have to be intelligent to understand it, and I have failed to be that right, but I have, my brain has finally caught up. The question we have to ask now is not, is not whether we can do the same logic on on eights as we did on nines, it's whether we could not do it. What would happen? Yeah, what would happen if eights were subject, subject to the same restriction that nines were restricted? So let's, what, what would happen if the eights could only go in the orange cells in columns three, five, and seven? Well, then we would know that we couldn't put any more eights in rows one, or row nine, um, because that would, if we put an eight here, we'd run into exactly the same problem I just illustrated with the nines. Well, that cannot be true, can it? Because if, if the eights were confined just to the orange cells, we would know we, could, we must remove an eight from this cell and an eight from this cell. And that would give us two sevens into these cell, these these circles, which definitely gives us a problem with making those cells add up to 15. It just doesn't work. Let, let me just, uh, I realize I've probably not explained that in a very articulate way, but um, let's, let's, um, that's the best way to do this. If this, if this is eight and the eights are restricted to the orange cells, then again, we have to decide where we're putting the eight here. Let's put it there. We've got to decide where we're putting the eight here. We've only got one option now, and there's no room for eights in column seven. It's exactly the same logic as the nines. Now, that means that that restriction does not apply to eights. It is not the case that the eights are locked into the orange. And if the eights are not, not locked into the orange, where are they in column five? Because that's their only escape valve, remember? Because the eights in r column three are definitely in one of those four orange cells. The eights in column seven are definitely not on the arrows because if they are, these two have to both be nines because we will add up to at least 18. 
So the only place where I can force the 8 not to be in an orange cell in one of these three columns is in column 5, which means there is an 8 on one of those arrows, which means there is a 1 on one of those arrows, and it means there is a 9 in one of those cells. And I have a horrible feeling that this is doing nothing. Um, that is very annoying. Uh, no, I was wondering if it was going to give if it was going to give me a restriction on ones, but it doesn't because I can still put. Oh no, can I put a one really in those two cells? No, I can't because if I put a one in those two cells, these five cells would add up to at least twenty. Two plus three plus four plus five plus six, I think, is twenty. So, and you can't make those circles add up to twenty. So, one is restricted in box number. Uh, five. It must be in one of those cells because there must be a one in the trident somewhere because that we know that the digits one to nine once each appear in the trident. But eight could absolutely be over here or over here. Oh, bother. So... What does that mean? <laughs> um, I'm wondering whether I can do the same thing with sevens. I mustn't lock seven. It mustn't be the case in this puzzle that the sevens are locked into orange cells. That's it. That is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, that is, it's just, this puzzle is, I can tell you this now, if we ever make another book, this puzzle needs to be in it, because this is utterly brilliant. Right, where do sevens go in, in these three columns? Let's ask that question. Let's start off with, what, with what's not going to work. If the sevens are restricted to the orange cells only, then we know we would have to remove a 7 from both this cell and this cell, and that's going to break the puzzle. So the 7s are not restricted to the orange cells only in these three columns. Now, let's study then where the 7s can go. In this column, they're pretty unrestricted. They do go in orange. In this column, is it possible we don't put the 7 in an orange cell? Well, that would require us to put a 7 on an arrow. But if we put a 7 on an arrow, how does that work, given we know then the other arrow is a 1-8 arrow adding up to 9? What are we going to put in this cell, and what are we going to put in this cell? It won't work. We have to put 2 here, because we can't put 1. Now we've added up to 9, we're going to have to have a repeated 9. That's broken. So we cannot put 7 in this column on an arrow, so 7 in this column is in the orange. Now, in this column, we must def this is the only option we've got now is to keep we must keep the seven out of the orange because if there is a seven in the orange, we've got this weird swordfishy fin thing ruling a seven out both those squares. So we have to put the seven on an arrow. But once we put a seven in one of those five cells, what are the other four digits going to be? Well, they'll have to be one plus two plus three plus four equals ten. Ten plus seven is 17, which is the absolute maximum that I can make these digits. So this must be a 1, 2, 3, 4, 7 quintuple, and those two squares must be an 8, 9 pair. That is, I have to say, that is so originally brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant setting, honestly. I think I've been a bit slow to realise it, but, but I have realised it. Now, what does that mean? So that means these digits now are fives, sixes, eights, and nines. And those ones are not eights and nines. So that means I must have eight and nine at the top and bottom of column seven. 
I've got a five and a six in this domino. Let's propagate that logic through the trident. That's removing six from those two squares because obviously six can't repeat in the trident. So six is now either here or here in column thingamy thing, column three. Now that digit is interesting to me. Because remember where we started in this puzzle? We started off noting that these four cells have to appear in those cells. Now, yeah, how could this be an eight or a nine? If it's an eight, where are we putting eight in this row now? Well, we can't put it in those cells because they share a box with this eight. We can't put it in the trident because the trident's already got an eight in it. And we can't put it there because there's an eight, nine pair in box six already. So this cannot be eight or nine, and therefore it is seven, which means that's an eight or a nine, which means there's a seven in one of these two cells, which means this digit is not seven. Ah, but in fact, look, we can rule seven out of this arrow altogether. You can't put seven on a three cell arrow without this having to be at least 10. So, ah, okay. So right, if this is eight now, this is one, three, four. If this is nine, this is two, three, four. That means we're definitely using three and four on this arrow. So we're definitely not using three or four on the arrow above. So this is seven plus one or seven plus two equals this digit. Um, okay, now what do we do? <laughs> now what do we do? Oh, no. So, well, seven can come out of these cells now, I suppose. Oh, this is gorgeous. Right, now I've got an X-wing on eights. Good grief. Wow. Okay. So let's um, let's think about what I mean by that. Let, I'm going to highlight these four cells in yellow. Now, let's look at column two and column seven together. How many eights are we expecting to, that there to be in column two of this puzzle if we correctly compete? complete it one how many eights are we expecting there to be in column seven of this puzzle one so we've got two eights in these two columns obviously but we also know there's definitely an eight in those two yellow squares because they're a seven eight pair and there's definitely an eight in those two squares because they're an eight nine pair so the two eights that we know exist in these two columns are definitely completely contained within these four cells and that means that we either must have an eight here and an eight here in the finish grid or an eight here and an eight here in the finish grid. Now, what does that mean for these two squares? Well, they definitely can't be eights because if they are eights, we're gonna have a third eight in either the, well, we're gonna have a third eight in these two rows of the grid, which won't work. Um, and that means that these two squares are not eights, obviously. So these are six and nine. This square's become an eight. So we've now got two digits in the puzzle. And, and now we've got an X-wing on nines. Yeah, okay, which, um, and using the same logic then, you can't have a nine in either of those cells. So there's a nine in one of these three cells. And now we have to think harder about what we do next. I'd love to know which of these was, was a nine. I'm sure, I'm sure there's an obvious way of seeing that, but I can't see what it is. Um, uh, <laughs> what do we do next? We can seven, eight, seven, eight here in this, these two. 
columns. Uh, something similar there, 8989. The trident now has a quadruple in it. Oh, yeah, okay, that's a little bit interesting. These four digits here, the 5, 6, 7, and 8, where do they go in box 5? Because we can't repeat them in the trident, they must live in those cells, mustn't they? So that's a 5, 6, 7, 8 quadruple, and those are not 7s. That's it. Right, I've seen what that's done. Look Now look at this row. I've got a 5, 6, 8 triple in the row, which means that square is not 8, and that's a 9, and that's an 8. And now we know that this arrow must be 1, 3, 4, which means this arrow has a 2 on it. So this is 2, 7. This is not 9. Now these are not 8s. Six, eight. Um, right, and this row now has only low digits left to appear in it. And that makes me a bit suspicious about this. Sir. Oh, this is beautiful. This is a five. This puzzle, GB Pack. This is one of the most beautiful puzzles, honestly, because now this has to be very low. Even if this is a four, these two digits have to be lower than four. And that means that in this box, we've got a one, two, three, four quadruple now, which means that square is a five, which means those are not five. So these are six and seven, which means those don't have six in them, which means these are five, eight, which means this is a six, this is a five. Now, these two squares have got to be a 6-9 pair to complete box number 4. No, there's a 6-7 there, so we can do that. So that's 9. That's 6. That's 9 in the middle of the grid now by Sudoku. So these digits are 1s, 2s, 3s and 4s. We know the 1s are not vertical because we know that one of these arrows is a 1-8 arrow. Now, how do we take this further now? I feel like we're the puzzle is... Yes, yes, it is. It's, it's starting to give up. Now look, this arrow. It can't be a 7 arrow because 7 must be a 1, 2, 4 triple. And there's a 5 on the arrow. So that must be 1, 2, 5 arrow adding up to 8. Which means this is a 9, this is an 8, this is a 7. Oh, so... Uh, yeah, that makes sense, because that means that's going to be a 3-4 pair. This 9 means that this is now a 6, and this is a 9 at the top of the grid. This arrow can't have a 1, a one or a 2 in it, because it's got to be the sum of those two digits. The minimum sum of these digits would be 3. In fact, this... right, look, there must be a 1 on this arrow. Because if there isn't, it's a minimum of 2 plus 3, which is 5, which we can't put here. So this digit is not a 1. So where does 1 go in this row? It can only go in the last position. Oh, and in fact, look, I could have got this before. There's a 1 in one of those two positions, so that's a 1. Now 4 in box 4 has to be in one of those two cells, so that square is not a 4. This square is not a 1, so this is a 3 or a 4. Oh, look, and this is a 1-2 pair, and this is a this is a white dot. So this square cannot be a 1 or a 2, so that must be a 3, that must be a 2, that must be a 3 by mathematics, that must be a 4 by elimination, that's a 2... Now we can get rid of some thingies. That's not a two. I've got a three, four. Oh, in fact, look, look at this row. What have I missed out? I've missed out two. There must be a two in this cell. So these squares here are from three, four, and seven. And, and this three has got to be next to a two on the arrow. So that's got to be a one. 
that's got to be a one on the eight arrow and that is beautiful because now I've locked a one out of this domino in box number f number eight and if you can't have a one here you can't accompany the one with an eight and make that a nine so the place for the one eight pair now in this column is not there so it must be yep here so this is now a one eight pair adding up to nine that's a nine by Sudoku um, one, two, nine is in one of those two cells. And sorry, I'm just trying to see if there's an obvious way of finishing this puzzle. Yeah, maybe, maybe here. Well, I'm not sure if I can finish it from here, but if you think about this arrow, it can't have a one on it and it can't have a two on it and it can't actually be a three, four pair because that will break this cell. So the minimum value of this arrow is a three plus a five, which is equal to eight. Well, we can't make it add up to more than eight because there's a nine already in the column. So that is a three, five pair. And in fact, we know the order adding up to eight, which means that's eight, that's five. Five is in one of those three cells. This three is seeing that digit, so that becomes a four, that becomes a three, that becomes a four. They become a four, seven pair. Uh, four comes out of these cells, so these become a one, three pair. This column needs sixes and sevens in it and there's a six there so that's got to be seven that's got to be six and i sort of feel like this must now be over it, it why can't i see how to finish it i i'm not sure probably because i'm inept um right let's have a look at this column right ones fives and sixes so that square is a five. Oh no, that square is just a five. Apologies, there's a one and a six here. So this is a one six pair and that's gonna limit the options for this digit. So this digit is, it can't be seven. So that's two or five, which I sort of feel like that must be, must be resolved somewhere. Right, where does one go in row one? It's not there. And it's not in either of those because this is a one eight pair and it's not there so that must be a one these squares at the um these have got to be two five and eight to complete box one look that means those squares down there have got to be four seven and nine and i can see that's useful for this digit which now has to be a four so four is in one of two places in box eight, one, two, three, five along the bottom. So that cell in the corner is a three or a five. That's two, three or five. That's one, two, oh, not three. So this is one, two or five. Ah, no, <laughs> still not resolved, is it? Um, hmm. So is there a reason this can't be five, six? I don't think so. Is there a reason it can't be one, two? Again, I'm not sure if there is a reason I'm seeing what it is. Which sort of suggests that this white dot has some heavy lifting to do. Now it can't have on it a one, a two, a seven, eight, or a nine. So its only options are three, four, five, and six but we can't actually eliminate anything from that, I don't think. Oh, well, I suppose, we yeah, no, we can. It can't be a three, four. If this is a three, four pair, that's gonna give this cell a problem. So we can remove three from this. So there is a five now on this white dot, which means that digit is not five, and it means this digit is not five. but I'm not sure whether we can go further than that. Okay, so back to, the, back to the thinking board. What do we do with this information? 
Maybe, maybe it's just Sudoku. That square. Oh, look, yeah. Eight here has to not be here. And for oh, I see. Yes, so eight must be there, and therefore eight is not here. So that's eight. That's one. That's six. That's one. That's two. That's five. And there we go. So now we're back in business again. And surely that's going to be huge. Yeah, that gets us a two and a seven. Seven by Sudoku goes here. Seven and six go into the grid. Six by Sudoku, four, nine unwinding pencil marks, nines and seven unwinding pencil marks, two and six here, we can fill that in. That's not twos, this is three, five. So that's not five. And this one, two pair is probably resolved by something which I can't see. Um, this six is removing itself from there. So this has become a four, five pair, which resolves that this is three. This is four. So those two squares there are three and six. We can see the order, six and three, three and one, one and two. Two goes up here and that should be a four and that should be a something. What's that, three, I think. Three and five, five and four, four and seven, seven needs a home, eight needs a home. And we might be finished, yes. Wow, just wow. That is such a clever puzzle. There is not a single iota of that puzzle that I do not admire and wish I had thought of. I loved the start and the, the way that you had to sort of figure out that it's, it's high digits and their relationship with the trident piece of the grid that, are, that that's crucial. But you have to do the logic sequentially. You have to realize it's the nine that's the most restricted. And once you've restricted the nine, you can think further about the nature of eight. And then once you've thought about that, you can think further about the nature of seven. You have to do it sequentially in order to understand the limits on everything that you've already done. It's just, I mean, that is stunning. Seriously, I'm, I'm not going mad here, am I? That is absolutely stunning. And then even after that, there are so many beautiful ideas in this. I loved this one, two, three, four triple that we found in that box. That was really good. Yeah, it's just quality, absolutely quality, absolute quality. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments. I do enjoy reading them, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.